Hello and welcome to another episode of News from the Gelding. Okay, so this week I'm going to carry on with discussing my portfolio from my master's degree 10 years ago. Um, this is the second project I worked on and it follows on from what I talked about last week. So if you fancy hearing about that and watching some short little films, stick around and I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, hello, welcome back. Okay, so before I start talking about what was the second module of my Fine Art Master's degree, I thought I would say a little bit about how I'm feeling about showing this now. Um, and I can't help but feel slightly deflated um, looking back on all the, this old work that at the time meant everything to me. Um, and now reduced as it is to the few clips I'm showing you and talking about it here on YouTube. Um, I don't know, it feels kind of sad really. Um, but anyway, it has to be seen within the context of when it was made. Um, all of the stuff I show you should really be installed properly in a gallery setting. Um, I'll try to show you um, some images of how it was displayed at the time um, to give you a better idea of the experience it might have been otherwise. Anyway, so last week I talked about how I shifted my my work into using those video clips of lighthouses primarily, um, of taking these astronomical events or, or processes and trying to relate them in some way to a human level in the generation of art, artwork. So for the second module, I, I continued in this vein. Um, and the first thing I did was I was interested in imposing the idea of an orbit, like the moon going around the earth, um, imposing that structure on me as a, as a documenting entity, if you will. Anyway, so I, there was, um, at the time when I was living in Bath, and I studied at Bath School of Art, there was a gasometer in the, in the middle of the city. Um, now, if you don't know what a gasometer is, I don't think there's many of them around now, but they're these great big circular structures. There's an image here. Um, and they contained uh, liquid gas for storage purposes. So the, the level of the, the, the structure would alter depending on how much gas was in, within the structure. So the outside is just a, a scaffolding of sorts, and then the top rises or lowers depending what's in there. Um, so I thought, right, I'll take that object, that circular object, and I'll I'll pick a path around it, and I'll I'll orbit it, and I will document the, the gasometer as I'm going around in a circle. So that's what I did. Um, I'll show you a clip of it now, just one rotation, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the experience of doing it. See you in a bit. The sound that you can hear in the background um, is, a, is a, a sound clip I found at the time, and I think it, I, if I remember rightly, it was, it was the sound of the oscillation of the sun 
So the sun alters in, in size very by a very small amount. And that's uh, over a period of a year, possibly. That's the sound, the frequency of that oscillation. So us again taking um, something from beyond the earth, beyond human experience, and putting it with this um, film of me tottering around the gasometer. So to produce that uh, short clip, I had to take many photographs. I can't remember how many were, there were now, um, over 300, I think, 350, something like that. And each image is me, I take a picture and then I would take one step to the side, take another picture and just carry on like that. What I liked about it in, in, from a kind of performance, an art performance aspect was what I experienced as the observer by following a, a path that was predetermined. I didn't know at the beginning where I was going to be going. I, I had to plan it loosely, so I had to find a path that would allow me to go right around it. But it meant that I had I went through a lot of, uh, what do you call it, wild, it was overgrown area. I shouldn't, I don't even think I was supposed to be in part of that um, area. I had to kind of climb through um, areas um, to take it. But that was quite interesting. I had to drag myself through uh, thorn bushes and, and whatever, what have you. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's it's it was an experience that wouldn't otherwise have been generated from my own volition. You know, you, you wouldn't normally climb through a, a thorn bush for any reason, unless you were Quite fond of doing so, I suppose. Having got all these images together, I had to then manually center them all so that the gasometer was the thing that remained central and perfect within the, the middle of the frame. As you can see, the um, I've, you can see how the uh, images were manipulated for each one. I wanted to show the process that I had to go through to make that look the way it did. That was another thing. It was, uh, you know, it was a very abnormal thing to do. And so I wanted the the film to show the fact that the images had to be skewed a lot to, to achieve that perfect image in the center. What I then thought I would do is, is pick another, a couple of other orbits further outside of, of, of the area um, possibly even a mile away to going outside of the city limits. But again, focusing on the gasometer. In the end, I abandoned that idea um, because I, 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 I thought about something slightly more interesting to me at the time. And that was picking some other objects that have had a similar circular shape, um, imagining, as it were, that they were a planet or something, and then I would orbit around those as well. So I picked them in different um, different sizes, um, ever decreasing. The next one I did was um, a lighthouse, um, the old um, Smeaton's Tower from Plymouth, Plymouth Hoe, um, made famous perhaps to many by the photograph of the Beatles sitting on the on the hoe. For this one, I I tied my shoelaces together so that my my movement would be restricted um, but that the each each photograph i took would be at this of the same uh distance each time incrementally um i got some funny looks that day um from people but um i was quite happy with the results i'll show that one now i'm just going to put the same sound in the background um and see what you think Okay, there we are. I then did a dustbin in the park, a um, pot of paint in the studio, which I didn't really, I didn't go into the studio that often because my, I didn't really need a studio to do my work. But I think, yeah, anyway, pot of paint. 
um, a battery, Duracell battery, and finally, um, oh, it's a capacitor uh, on a circuit board. Now, they're hopefully playing around me now. Um, the larger objects allowed me to have a kind of physical experience around them of sorts, um, ever diminishing. Um, when it got to the, the in the park, the dustbin, that was quite easy. I just walked around it, got some funny looks again, but it was it was fine. Pot of paint, um, I I was on the floor of the studio, which was quite a strange thing. I was having a crawl around doing that. Uh, when it got to the battery, that was just on my desk. And for the final one, the capacitor, I I made up this little rig. I'll put a picture on here. And this allowed me to, for the first time, not actually be physically present around the object. I made the, I used this little turntable I made, and no, I bought the turn, turntable, just a pl plastic thing, and just moved it incrementally around and used that thing there as a, a digital microscope um, to focus in on that one little point. So with all these films, all these clips made, um, I wanted to show it in such a way that these various scales could be interchangeable. Um, so that the very small, like the capacitor, could appear very large as though it were, in effect, the gasometer. Um, at the very end of this, I'll show a version that I used in the in the end which involved all of these objects gradually speeding up until the background is a blur and the object is all you see is the object and a blur and then it would swap into the next object decelerate speed up again and keep switching around but anyway i had to make this um installation so I had a screen for each of the films, but the films would kind of swap between screens. So I had a very large screen all the way down to a tiny little screen that I I made from a, it was a, a PlayStation, a PSP, PlayStation handheld game thing, and I used that. I'm gonna, there's probably images coming up now. Let's have a look. I'll, I'll have, a, have a look at the same time. No, that's not the one. Do, 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 do. There we are. Right. Yes. So, yes, each of these um, plimps I made out of just MDF and painted them a matte black. Um, I made shelves in each, each of them to contain the various computers or whatever devices I was using. Um, and I made, like, cardboard um, masks to to uh, alter the size of each screen. Um, I wanted this to be in a very dark room. So once the lights were off, um, it, it, all you saw really were the screens. And I wanted it to be, um, here you can see the, the kind of curve I was going for. If you were standing at the smallest one, all of the screens would be visible and, and roughly in line with each other. When the lights were off, got something like this. I mean, you still got a bit of light there, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, it was quite, quite, um, it was quite a nice look in the end. Um, I've got this little clip here that I took um, when I documented. It's, not, it's a bit shaky, but you get the general idea. So here it is.
okay there we are um and what i'm going to show you now is a little com composite that i made before i set up the installation to show what the the effect might look so this this gives you a slightly better idea of how the films went together and the interplay between them here we are Okay, so there we are. This this work I called City Orbit. Um, I don't know how successful it was, or you know what you would might think of it. Um, at the time, um, it seems everyone does time lapses these days. They're quite quite popular things to do, and you can do them on your phone quite easily. Uh, when I did this, it was slightly. It wasn't quite as um, prevalent. Um, so what I was doing seemed quite different, I suppose you could say. Um, I think now you can probably find um, little AI programs that would be able to to get objects centered without having to manually alter them. But that's the way I did at the time. And that was part and parcel of the work for me. Um, anyway, there we are. What I'll do, when I, after I say goodbye, I'll, there'll be... Um, a segment um, of how it, how it actually looked when it was installed properly. Um, I did a little um, a group show in Bristol. I don't know when that was, 2014 possibly, and I showed it there just as a single pro projection. Um, but it gives you an idea of the the speeding up um, and the morphing into the next shape and decelerating and all of that. Don't worry about watching all of it. Um, don't really need to unless you fancy it. But but the effect is heightened. I think when it, once it's sped up, it's quite interesting. Okay, there we are. There was the second portion of my master's degree. Next week will probably be the third and final part, um, which was my most ambitious project, um, and it took me. Um, a lot of work to get it done to get it realized but you'll have to wait till next week for that otherwise in terms of my writing i'm mostly writing now um i've been trying to get up earlier um i got up at half five yesterday and it almost killed me for the rest of the day so i think i'm gonna have to uh, slowly um get into this um process of getting up early because i i work best in the mornings um and then after that, it's tend to work worse and worse. I haven't done any painting, so that's um, no good. But I've got a list of paintings that I want to work on. So I'm probably going to start off a few other ones uh, before I begin the cover. Because again, I've, I've had a big long gap between I la the time I did the last painting. And I imagine I've become a bit more ropey in the uh, meantime my wrist is also playing up again a little bit of wrist news um i had another scan the other day um i don't know what i so i've had an x-ray an ultrasound and now i've had a ct scan on it and i'm waiting to hear back on the results all i know is that as soon as i start drawing it it's it's hurting and it hurts for a couple of days after so it's no good um for the last month, it's been very good, actually, because I've hardly been using it. But obviously, I can't live the rest of my life not doing drawing or painting or anything else. I'm doing most things in my left hand now. It's no good. Well, I can I can drink a cup of tea with my right hand. That's about it. Anyway, doom and gloom over for now. Okay, so I'll see you next week. And if you want to stick around for a little bit of the the finished City Orbits composition, then do so. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Cheerio.